Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to use Altium Designer to simulate an inverting buck boost converter. So the first step is to have a project open and ready. So that would be go to uh, file a new project, create a new project, set your schematic, add it to the project, and you're, you're about ready to go. And then you need to be able to simulate your design. You won't have the simulate tab by default. You actually need to install an extension. So go to your account profile, choose extensions and updates, and then type in mixed, M-I-X-E-D, and you'll pull up like mixed analog or mixed simulation. Install that extension, restart Altium, and then you'll have this feature. Once that's done, you're ready to follow along. If you don't have Altium Designer, then you can click on the link in the description below to get a free trial to Altium or a discount if you want to purchase Altium. So here we have a buck boost converter. The input voltage range is 2.7 to 5.5 volts. The output voltage is negative or should be negative 10 volts. Output current 100 milliamps. And then we have some other parameters here. Okay, like the minimum input capacitance, minimum output capacitance you need for this to work. And then there's there would be an inductor with a minimum inductance of 13.3 microhenry. So let's go ahead and start placing our parts. You can go to simulate and then choose, you know, you can place sources, place models and all that, but let's go to place simulation generic component. And here it pulls up all of the components that can be simulated. Let's start adding some devices. So first of all, you want a V source and that would be VSRC. Okay. And we'll close that. Next we need is an input capacitor. It doesn't show on the diagram, but we need an input capacitor typically, okay, for a kind of a re more realistic buck boost converter. We need the output capacitor, so I'll place that. Then there's the inductor. Now you can search for these directly, right? I don't have to scroll up and down to find these devices. So I'll hit spacebar to rotate that inductor and place it. Next is the diode. So I'll hit you know, type diode, click diode in a place there. Okay, these are the same devices as if you were to go to simulate, place sources, voltage source, or place models, okay? Pretty much the same thing. So for instance, VD MOSFET may not place here, but that's fine. You can get that from this MOSFET, which is the MOSFET end channel VD MOS specifically. So you double click on there, rotate that with the space bar, and place it. It'll be to the right of the input capacitor, which should be around here. The next thing we need is an output resistor to pull the, or to draw the appropriate amount of current. So I'll scroll for a resistor and there we go. Space bar to rotate that and place it. The next thing is a ground. So you go and click right on here, place ground power port. And you're pretty much good to go. There is one more thing you need to drive the MOSFET though, which is another, like it's a pulse power source. What's cool is this device can act as a DC or other kind of power source. So I'm gonna control C to copy that, control V to paste it. And then I just have to double click on it to modify the type of voltage source it is by clicking on the stimulus type and choosing pulse. Now, this device is supposed to be switching at 1.25 megahertz, and that translates to a period of 800 nanoseconds. So you wanna click on here in the period section and type 800N, and for the pulse width, a little trick you can do is type in the duty cycle, 0 0.7955, and then multiply it by that period, and it'll automatically calculate it for you. Now this would be the maximum duty cycle that you can work with for this application. You can vary the duty cycle depending on what kind of output voltage you want to work with. Okay, the DC magnitude I'll set to zero. The value that I really care about is the pulsed value, which will be that, it, you know, it's five volts right now. I'm gonna set this to say 15 to really turn this MOSFET on and drive that really, uh, drive that hard, okay? Now that our parameters are set, well, we are ready to change the values for some of these things. So let's double click on this input voltage. You want to change this to 
Mm, let's set this at our minimum input voltage we expect for the circuit, which is 2.7 volts. For the capacitor, the input, the minimum, it says 2.9 microfarads. But what you want to do is choose a more realistic value. So that's where you would go to octo part. I have a capacitor pulled up already. Um, or, you know, actually, this is an inductor. But you can type, you can type and search for capacitor, right? And if you type in cap, then you can look for capacitance and then see what kind of realistic or practical capacitors are actually in production. So instead of 2.9 microfarad, I want to go higher than that, 3.3 or even 6.8, because capacitances have a tendency to have their capacitance when connected to a DC, um, to a DC source. So you can click apply, and you know it'll only filter for that. And then my other capacit capacitance set to a minimum of 9.6 on the output for the capacitance. I can double that and change it to like 22 microfarad capacitor or something. Okay. I'll go close to the minimums though, just to see what happens. So 3.3 on the on the input capacitance, and I'll stick to 10 microfarad on the output capacitance. So now here for this input capacitance, 3.3 micro, and then for the output capacitance, 10 microfarad. For my inductor. A realistic inductor value, if you were to go back to Octopart and you look at the list of inductance values, the next highest up, aside from 13.3, is 15 microhenry. There's no like 13.3 standard inductor, at least through um, the micro, the, the at least through the Octopart part search. Okay. Let's go to the resistor and the resistor should pull the amount of current, like 100 milliamps, from the 10 volts. 10 volts divided by 100 milliamps is 100 ohms. So that's what we'll go with. Okay. And for the diode, you can set the the um, the diode forward voltage, but I'll leave this as it is for right now. Okay. So the next step is to wire your devices. Let's go ahead and wire these up with Control W as a shortcut. Or you can click here. I'm going to hold this down and choose wire on that. And then that, that does the same as well. OK. Now I'm wiring my circuit. It probably bothers you, <laughs> you know, it might bother you that I have my devices um, with, positioned weirdly. So I'm just going to adjust that. Okay. Oh, let's see if I can drag this. Okay. Good. Control S to save. Okay. The next thing we need to do is name these devices. So we'll go to tools, annotation. Annotate schematics quietly, click yes, and voila. This looks good, so I'll save this another time. And the next step is to simulate this circuit. So you want to open the simulation dashboard. So go to simulate simulation dashboard. What it does is that it chooses what it wants to verify for simulation. So you can choose just the document you're working on or the entire project. Very convenient because then what if you have simulation on your uh, simulation circuits on multiple schematic sheets and you don't want to simulate all uh, sheets all at the same time? You can choose this. Verification, it checks whether the devices can be simulated or not. So that checks out. Preparation, it looks at the DC sources. Uh, well, it looks at the sources in general for simulation. Now probes, you can add a probe. I care about the output voltage, so I'll click add probe for voltage and place it right on the pin. This is very important. Place it right on the pin of the device, like here or here. OK, like right there is good. It shows a value, but don't worry about that. I have a simulation profile pulled up already, so we'll close that. I'll do a Control S to save. And don't worry about this, because that's, that's old information. Now I'll change this to something like a nice green on my output. Save my design. And then I'm ready to uh, simulate.
analysis set up and run. I care about the response with time passing, which is what the transient simulation does. You know, when time passes, it's transient, right? So then it goes from zero to two milliseconds. I would simulate around two to 10 milliseconds when simulating for power electronics uh, in order for it to reach steady state typically. So you'd hit run on here and then it's it's running. So let's take a look at that, right? It goes from zero straight down to that negative five volts. And then on the output here, it has a ripple voltage. You can define the ripple voltage. Well, you always set the ripple voltage requirements and then that drives um, that drives your calculations for what type of inductors, capacitors, values you need for your circuit. Okay, um, but yeah, it's good to see that. Now we are half of the output voltage we're supposed to be at. A little trick I'm gonna show you, I mean, you're realistically not always gonna do this in real life, but I just wanna show you this real quick. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the theory of uh, capacitance turning on the FET and all that stuff and choosing choosing the right FETs and power MOSFETs versus standard MOSFETs. MOSFETs. I'm just going to sh shoot this right up to 150 volts on that gate. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, you wouldn't have to do this with a PMOS. It's much easier to turn on in this situation, especially on the high side rail. But anyway, let's go ahead and run back to the simulation dashboard, hit run, and then notice the difference here. This starts to approach that negative 10 volts on the output voltage. So you can keep doing that. In fact, it'll go past that the more you turn this on, but you're going to get to ridiculous um, gate voltage values. OK, so that is how you can use Altium to work with uh, circuit simulation. OK, to do a circuit simulation for you. And then you can save this to the cloud as well. So you could choose save to server or by right clicking on this and adding their project to version control. Mine is already in version control uh, by default when I do my projects. Okay, and save the server. The benefit of using this tool feature is you can start sharing your projects in Altium 365, the cloud and all that. And I have videos on that explaining how to use the cloud. But more importantly, let's say you want to get this circuit or somebody on your team wants to get the circuit to a PCB layout. Well, you want to check out my next video where I show you how to layout PCB from a schematic.